All right, here's a quick review of some information that we covered in uh, some recent video lessons. We talked about treetop orbits, and those represent satellites that orbit at the lowest possible altitude. The speed of a treetop orbit, well, let me backtrack. The speed of orbit for any satellite is the square root of g times the mass of the planet or moon or body being orbited divided by lowercase r, the um, radius of the circle that the satellite orbits in. For the case of the treetop orbit, all we have to do is replace lowercase r with capital R, implying that the satellite orbits at approximately an altitude equal to the radius of the planet itself, plus a minute amount to clear the treetops. For the Earth, that uh, implies a treetop orbit of about 7,900 meters per second, which is, um, or corresponds to a period of orbit of about 90 minutes. Let's see if we can figure out what's the speed and period for a treetop orbit of the moon. Now, that might be a misnomer because there are no trees on the moon. However, more importantly, there's no atmosphere on the moon. And so it would be possible to put a satellite in a treetop orbit to have it orbit just high enough that it doesn't maybe uh, crash into any uh, mountains or the rims of the craters on the moon. So let's draw a picture of our satellite in this treetop orbit. barely clearing the surface of the moon. There we go. How fast would it have to travel? How long would it take to complete one orbit? So all we need to do is apply this equation. Now the uh, mass and the radius of the moon are given 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms and 1.74 times 10 to the 6th meters, both values uh, clearly less than that of the Earth. The velocity of a treetop orbit for the moon is in the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared multiplied by 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. Grab your calculators. Let's see if we can come up with the final answer. 1.74 times 10 to the 6th meters. But before we calculate, let's check the units. Meters cancel one of the meters. Kilograms cancel one of the kilograms. And if you substitute what you know a newton is equivalent to, a kilogram meter per second squared, then you can see that the... Um, remaining kilogram will cancel out and we'll be left with meters squared uh, per second squared and the square root of that will be meters per second. Okay, so let's check it out mathematically, numerically. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd divided by 1.74 times 10 to the 6th. Get the square root of 1.74. Just a little over 2 million meters squared per second squared, which comes out to a velocity about 1,679 meters per second, or if you want, about 1.7 kilometers per second, which is about, it's very nearly the same thing as one mile per second. Not one mile per hour. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. One mile per second, right? Four laps down on the track, all in a blistering speed that only requires one second to complete four laps. So it's very fast, but not as fast as the 7.9 kilometers per second required for a treetop orbit of the Earth, which would never be possible because of the Earth's atmosphere. What about um, the period? So the period of orbit 
is equal to 2 pi times the square root of r cubed divided by gm. So this is 6.28 times the square root of, well, if we're talking about the period for a treetop orbit, we change lowercase r into capital R. So 1.74 times 10 to the 6th cubed divided by 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th multiplied by 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. Okay, again, grab your calculators. Okay, so forgive me for the time it took to punch all that in. I got about 6,510 seconds. That's hard for me to relate to, so I'm going to divide that by 60. And that comes out to about 108 minutes. Or in other words, about 1 hour and 48 minutes. Okay. One more thing that might be worth calculating. What's the gravitational field strength at the surface of the moon? So gravitational field strength is equal to g m divided by r squared. If we want to know the value at the surface, then we change little r into capital R. So 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd divided by 1.74 times 10 to the 6th quantity squared. Comes out to about 1.62 newtons per kilogram. How does that compare to the acceleration of the surface of the Earth? It's about 17% or one-sixth the value of the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, which means you'd have a pretty good vertical leap if you were to jump as high as you could on the moon. Uh, what else does that imply? How long would it take, or how far would something fall if you climbed to the top of a tower, figure not drawn to scale, and dropped a massive object toward the moon, how far would it fall in one second? Don't make the mistake of assuming that it would fall 1.62 meters. That's the speed it would have when it strikes the surface of the moon. So if it starts with a speed of zero when you release it, and it strikes the surface with a speed of 1.62 meters per second, then the average speed was 0 0.81 meters per second. So in other words, an object would fall 81 centimeters in the first second of free fall when dropped on the moon. Let's make these calculations one more time just to drive home the example. Now, uh, here's a figure I don't know if you've heard of before, Giuseppe Piazzi, in the year 1801, actually on the first day of the new year 1801, January 1st, uh, Giuseppe Piazzi discovered a dwarf planet in our solar system. Now when I uh, grew up in grade school I learned the mnemonic device my very eager mother just served us nine pizzas. My very eager mother just served us nine pizzas and you can probably guess what that represents. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now these days we'd need to change the mnemonic because we don't consider Pluto to be a planet. We refer to it as a dwarf planet. And the reason is if we considered all the dwarf planets in our solar system, there'd be too many to keep track of. Just a few of them that I can name off the top of my head. Ceres, that was the one discovered by Giuseppe Piazzi. Uh, Eris, Maki Maki, 
Aumea, and I'll just say etc. So there are several dwarf planets, uh, but the main planets are the ones lived here. So maybe we say, my very, my very eager mother just served us nachos. How's that sound? Uh, Ceres is located, its orbit, somewhere in between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. And it's rather small. Here are some of the physical properties of Ceres. It has um, a radius of about 470 kilometers. So that's 470,000 meters. Or if you prefer, 4.7 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th meters. And its mass is a small fraction of the Earth. It's even a small fraction of the mass of the Moon. It's 9.38 times 10 to the 20th kilograms. Not sure why I'm rewriting that when it's presented right here. So, you should find the speed of the treetop orbit, the period of the treetop orbit, and the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of Ceres. Let's start with acceleration due to gravity. G m over r squared, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times 9.38 times 10 to the 20th, divided by 4.7 times 10 to the 5th, quantity squared. So we have an acceleration due to gravity at the surface equal to about 0 0.28 newtons per kilogram, which means the free fall acceleration is 0 0.28 meters per second squared near the surface of Ceres, which means if you dropped an object, uh, the distance it would fall in the first second of free fall would be about 14 centimeters. Compare that to Earth, where the distance something falls in the first second of free fall is 4.9 meters. Okay, so a very drastic difference, a rather small um, value for the gravitational field at the surface. The speed of the treetop orbit, this is the square root of, you know off the top of your head, hopefully by now you know the formula, the square root of g times the mass divided by the radius. So the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 9.38 times 10 to the 20th, divided by 1.7, uh, I'm sorry, 4.7 times 10 to the 5th. So we're talking about the square root of about 133,000, square root of 133,116, which gives a value of 365 meters per second. That's barely greater than the uh, speed of sound on Earth under normal, um, st under standard uh, pressure and temperature, right? So at room temperature, at sea level, Sound travels through the air at about 343 meters per second, and the speed of a treetop orbit on Ceres would be slightly more than that at 365 meters per second. Period is equal to, um, well, speed is equal to 2 pi r over t, so the period is equal to 2 pi r divided by the speed. So 2 pi times 4.7 times 10 to the fifth, divided by 365. And this comes out to about 8,094 seconds. Hard to relate to. So that's the same as 134 minutes or about 2 hours and 15 minutes. 
Okay, well, thanks for watching.